Starting from July 15, 2019, one of DigiPetty's directors began to post a series of Luna music videos on Vimeo. They were in 4K, and more details became clearer. The final re-upload was posted on August 3rd, and many orbits were speculating as to whether or not this was counting down the comeback. While there were many different scenes added, removed, or elongated to change the narrative, our focus today will be on the 4K re-release of Hyunjin's Around You. Digipetty released the 10-minute film version, which, as I've said in the past, reflects the looping properties of the Luniverse. Today, we'll discuss clearer details of certain scenes, some quantum theories and mechanics, and look at the larger picture of the timeline and reasons for its manipulation. Without further ado, let's enter the Luniverse. Recently, I finished reading Ruth Ozeki's A Tale for the Time Being, and the entire time I was reading, I was like, wow, this is so much like the Luniverse. It's a phenomenal read, and I recommend all of you dig your teeth into it. In the back of Ozeki's book, there are six appendices that outline important aspects of the story and timeline. The ones that I will focus on today are Appendix B, Quantum Mechanics, Appendix E, Schrodinger's Cat, and Appendix F, Hugh Everett. Quick disclaimer, this novel was published in 2013 and is in no way officially affiliated with Luna and the Luniverse. However, upon reading it, there were many insights and aspects that related to my earlier theories and brought new ideas to my head. In case of having your mind blown, orbit viewer discretion is advised. Appendix B, Quantum Mechanics. In summation, quantum mechanics and physics both describe the interactions of matter and energy as they move through time and space, but on a different scale. Quantum is at the lowest scale. There is a set of principles that apply to atomic and subatomic particles, really, really small things. Superposition, by which a particle can be in two or more places or states at once, in other words, both alive and dead. Entanglement, by which two particles can coordinate their properties across space and time and behave like a singular system. In other words, a character and her narrator, your body and your shadow. The measurement problem, by which the act of measuring or observation alters what is being observed, in other words, the telling of a dream. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, or have just began to binge my videos, you'll remember in my Complete Theory Introduction video, I brought up the idea of quantum mechanics in the Luniverse. Was I too overambitious at the time? Perhaps. Did people tell me I got the information wrong? Yeah, they did, even though they never helped me or anyone else by correcting said falsities so that I could make alterations to my theory. But was I on the nose about the string theory of possible other timelines and worlds? Yes. And that's exactly what this quantum phenomena relates to. Appendix E. Schrodinger's cat. Ozeki writes, The experiment goes like this. A cat is put into a sealed box. With him in the box is a diabolical mechanism. A glass flask, or hydrocyanic acid, a small hammer aimed at the flask, and a trigger that will either cause the hammer to release or not. The factor that controls this release is the behavior of a small bit of radioactive material being monitored by a Geiger counter. If within, say, an hour, one of the atoms in the radioactive substances decays, the Geiger counter will detect it and trigger the hammer to shatter the flask, releasing the acid, and the cat will die. However, there is an equal probability that no atom will decay within that hour, in which case the trigger will hold and the cat will live. The point of this experiment isn't to kill or save the cat. The point is to illustrate a perplexing paradox of the measurement problem in a quantum system when they are observed and measured. The cat and the atom are entangled particles. That means that they share certain characteristics or behaviors. In this case, their fate within the box. Decayed atom equals dead cat. Undecayed atom equals living cat. Together in their little box, the cat and the entangled atom are a part of a quantum system that is measured by an observer. With that being said, we also need to understand superposition. Imagine that instead of an entangled cat atom in the box, you were measuring a single electron. Before you open the box to observe it, that electron exists as a wave function, which is an array of itself in all of the places it might possibly be in the box. Superposition, a particle that can be in all of its possible states at once. The measurement problem arises the moment you open the box to observe the particle. When you do, the wave function appears to collapse into a single state, fixed in time and space. So, in the cat experiment, 
we're measuring the degrees of the cat's aliveness, its existential status, as it were. When you open that box, the cat is either alive or dead. 50% of the time, it will be alive. 50% of the time, it will be dead. But before you open the box, the cat's state is in multiples. The cat is both alive and dead until the moment you open that box and cement its state within time and space. This conclusion is absurd, which was the whole point. But now it raises many questions. At what point in time does a quantum system stop being a superposition of all its possible states and become a singular either or state instead? And does that existence of a singular cat, either dead or alive, require an external observer like you? And if not you, then who? Can the cat be an observer of itself? Do we all just exist in an array of all possible states at once? Schrodinger's cat is very much present in the Luniverse. In Hunjin's Around You, it's evident at the end with all the other cats. Kinlip sings of opening Pandora's box in Eclipse, in The Carol and Heart Attack, boxes are opened, etc. While there aren't a ton of visuals to back up this theory, it ties in amazingly with the story of the Luniverse and the Dreamworld theory. Quickly, I want to mention Pandora's box. Pandora was breathed into existence by Hephaestus, god of fire. She was gifted with two things, curiosity and a box with its contents not meant for mortal eyes. She was never to open the box. The wonderment and pondering over the contents of the box was maddening, and she began to get crazy about just what was in that box. She later did open it, and monsters were unleashed. This doing was irreversible. Kim Lip's lyrics from Eclipse read as this. I'm so curious, it makes me crazy. Smudged in the light, your heart visible in just one look, it's like Pandora's box. Silhouette like a painting in the mirror, call you up by my side, yeah. Pandora's box doesn't have to be literal. It can just be the paradoxal yearning to answer our curiosity, or not, and whether it's a blessing or a curse. And I believe she's calling to her shadow up by her side because she's that curious. Remember, Pandora released monsters, or dark beings, into the world when she opened the box. Your shadow represents darkness and your opposite side too, so if Kimlip were curious enough to open the box... Again, Schrodinger's cat relates to the butterfly effect, possible alternate timelines, and worlds existing outside of our own, outside of the observer's eye. It relates to the existence as one being over split existences between a 50-50 world. Either you are dead or alive, dark or light, new or old, a sleeper or awake, etc. The many worlds interpretation of Schrodinger's experiment, proposed by American physicist Hugh Everett in 1957, challenges this theory of wave function collapse, saying instead that the superposed quantum system persists and branches. At every juncture, every moment where possibilities arise, a schism occurs, worlds branch, and multiplicity ensues. Infinite worlds, mutually unknowable, a web of many worlds. Appendix F, Hugh Everett. Hugh Everett published what came to be called his Many Worlds Interpretation of Quantum Mechanics in 1957. It was his doctoral thesis at Princeton. It was not well received, and leading physicists of his day called him stupid. He became disheartened and gave up on quantum mechanics, choosing instead to go into weapons development. He wrote war games software that would simulate nuclear war, and he was involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. He advised the White House on nuclear warfare development and strategy during the Cold War. He had already written the mathematical proof of his many world interpretation, and he believed that anything he could imagine would occur or already had. He later died of a heart attack. In this world, he was dead, but in his many worlds, he believed he was immortal. Because of his belief in many different worlds stemming from the initial 50-50, then he knew he would never die. If he died in this world, he would have lived in the other. If his doctoral thesis was accepted in this world, then it would not have been in another. So now, in the context of the butterfly effect, think of how many minute changes in a timeline could occur just from these two vastly differing starting points. Yeah, millions. Billions, probably. Hugh Everett insinuates there's a flip side. And from that flip side, there's more and more branches. Much like the opposite side of the Mobius, where the mirrored shadow girls reside, there are a thousand things that can come from their actions. That's how the timeline's being manipulated in the first place. How does this relate to the time travel theory? My mutual and friend at Luna Theory 
posted a thread about their observations of the Around You music video after its 4K release. It blew up. And after the popularity it gained, Munsoko himself followed Luna Theory. This confirmed everything in the theory as being seriously considerable. I will leave a link in the description of the theory for you to read. Luna Theory states that first, Hyunjin's letters are odd. Not because we're unaware of their future destination, but because they are antiquated, meaning they don't look of this time and place. The paper, handwriting, and postcards are vintage looking. The 4K revealed that Hyunjin's postcard is a vintage one from the Springville Motel in Utah. It dates back to the 30s and 40s, and the motel no longer exists. The postcard even mentions there being 12 rooms at the inn and the publisher's address, which is in LA, the city where Girlfront was filmed. This further binds Hyunjin to the Odd Girls. The map that the Odd Girls have is antiquated as well, for it's a vintage map of the 1930s, the same era as Hyunjin's aforementioned postcard. So, Luna Theory put each marked spot on the map, and it was fruitless. However, the four locations they were able to find were motels, hotels, or inns. Spooky. Hyunjin's location is the Hollywood La Brea Motel, and Luna Theory managed to locate a postcard of this motel from the 30s and 40s as well. Again, very spooky. My personal opinion on Hyunjin's letters is that they hold information about what she's learned or what she knows. So, maybe instead of letters, they function more like notes. In Around You, when she goes to the hair salon, she looks at her letters and notes as if she's confirming that this is the location. The location of Goan, the hairdresser. Luna Theory also brings up men in the Lunaverse. The few men that we have seen are thought to represent other members. Even Every Day I Love You, Cherry and Jinsoul who haven't awoken their odd eyes in the Lunaverse yet in Eclipse, and Goan in Around You. Yes, you heard me. It's likely that this hairdresser represents Goan. Maybe Hyunjin recognizes the boy because she knows him or her in a different timeline, say the 1930s. In the Seesaw Cinema Theory, we see the Walkman on the table where both Goan and Chu sit. Goan is making the bracelet for Hyunjin that we saw on Around You. The Walkman obviously indicates to us that Goan knows of the loop and how to go back in the timeline, evident in X2X and literally the entire Butterfly era. What can be said about this is that Hyunjin, after receiving the bracelet from Goan, the bracelet may have served as a sign for her to go ahead and meet with Goan. The boy at the hair salon that Hyunjin's notes lead her to is a hairdresser. Goan's hair changed from dark to light, indicating enlightenment and gathered knowledge, so perhaps the bracelet was a message of sharing this knowledge to Hyunjin. Or maybe it was a meeting for Hyunjin to tell of the loop, which she knows very well, in order for Goan to try and break the loop during Butterfly. Now here is one of the most chilling observations that Luna Theory makes. When Hyunjin walks up the stairs and enters the room, there is an apple. This solidifies the notion that this boy represents Goan, for that apple is linked with YY by Y and is the fruit of knowledge, something that both Goan and Hyunjin are willing to share if it means liberation. The last thing that Luna Theory brings up is the hangers. There are different prints of hangers, and odd ones are strewn around. They were inconclusive about what they represent, but I feel that it was worthy to make note of. The only thing that I can think of is Heejin or Cherry when they change clothes, so I don't have much of an opinion on that right now. Well, what does all of this have to do with Schrodinger's cat and quantum phenomena? Let's start with Jinsoul's beta fish. The beta fish is a good example of the string theory and its connections to those observations. In my complete theory analysis of Singing in the Rain, I said that all of the fish tanks in the music video represented alternate worlds, and how when Jinsoul dumped her fish in that one specific tank and spread her blue, she awoke in the Luniverse, or rather the specific timeline in the Luniverse. We know that this occurred after Every Day I Need You, where Vivi, with the information she had, brought Jin Soul to the Luniverse early for a reason. And in Vivi's letter to Hong Kong, where we saw Jin Soul at the aquarium, most likely looking for her fish. 